welcome to Victoria's Educational Services, where I break down difficult concepts into easy steps. Today's objective is to understand and solve two-digit dividend division problems with the remainder in the ones place by using place value disk. This lesson covers standard 4.nbt.5. This topic is difficult for many adults I know because when we were in school, we were only taught the standard algorithm, which we knew as long division. Common Core uses multiple models to demonstrate division, which includes standard algorithm, place value disks, tape diagrams, arrays, and area models. Today, we will be learning about using place value disks to divide. By the end of this video, you should be able to divide using place value disks with no problem. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with Lesson 16 Problem Set. The directions tell us to show the division using disks. Relate your work on the place value chart to long division. Check your quotient and remainder by using multiplication and addition. Question number one is seven divided by two. We can see they gave us a place value chart labeled ones. Our first step is to draw seven disks in the ones place because the number seven is made up of seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like to draw a line underneath, little squiggly line, just so that I don't mix up the dots that I'm going to draw while I'm solving this problem. Okay, so step one is complete. Step two is, because we are dividing by two, we are going to draw two straight lines. One, two. And I like to label them just so I don't lose track when we start getting to the bigger numbers that we'll be working with in the future. Okay, now that we have our two lines, we're going to move on to our third step. Our third step is to put one disc on each line until we run out of discs or we don't have enough to keep going. So I cross out the discs as I draw them so I don't lose track. So one, two, and then I cross out one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, six, and then I'm going to stop there because I can see I only have one disc left. We need an even amount of discs on each line. So we're going to count how many discs we have on each line right now. And I see that we have one, two, three dots on each line. And we have one disc left over. This gives us our answer, which is three, remainder one because we have three dots on each line that's where we get the three from and our remainder is one next we are going to solve seven divided by two using the long division or standard algorithm so our first step would be how many times does two go into seven so a lot of my students benefit from writing uh, their times tables on the side. So we'd write two, four, six, eight to see which number comes closest to seven without going over. So I can see that six comes closest to seven without going over. So I counted by two, one, two, three times to get six. I'll write three on top and I'll write six on the bottom. Then we subtract and seven minus six equals one. So this gives us our same answer. It is three remainder one. Our quotient is three, our remainder is one. Our final step is to check our work using multiplication and division. We can see they started us off with three times two. I'm gonna count by three two times to get my answer. So three times two is three, six. So this part's very important. You check your answer by multiplying and then adding your remainder. Our remainder was one. So now we are adding one 
and we get 7. The number that we were dividing was 7, so our answer checks out, and we are all done. Here's our next example. So problem number 2 is 27 divided by 2. As you can see, they already gave us our place value chart with our tens and our ones column labeled. The first thing I'm going to do is draw my ones. So in the number 27, I know that there are seven ones. So I'm going to draw seven discs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now looking at my tens column, I see the number 27. So I know that there are two tens. One, two. Remember, I like to draw a squiggly line just separating my discs so that I don't confuse them with the ones that I'm going to draw. So my next step is to draw two lines because just like that last problem, I'm dividing by two. So now I'm going to take a look at my dots and I'm starting in the tens column because if I have anything left over in the tens column, I'm going to have to move it to the ones column. So make sure you start with the tens. So remember, I'm just taking each disc and I'm writing it on the line. So we have one, two, and I use both of my dots. So now I'm going over to my ones column, one, two, Make sure you're crossing out your dots. Three, four, cross out your dots. Five, six, cross out your dots. And just like our last problem, you can see that I have one dot left. All right, so to record our answer, we're looking at the tens column first, and I see I have one ten in both columns. So I have one ten, and if I look at the ones column, I have three ones in each column. So I have three ones. And as you know, our remainder, which is up top, is one because we had one dot left over. So 27 divided by two is 13 remainder one. Okay, so in the directions, my next step is to do long division. So I'm dividing 27 divided by two. So I have to see how many times does 2 go into 2. If you need to, you can start writing your 2 times tables, but we can see 2 goes into 2 one time. So I'm writing 1 on top, and I'm writing 2 below. 2 minus 2 is 0, and then I bring down my 7. How many times does 2 go into 7? 2, 4, 6, 8, remember, we want to get as close to 7 as possible without going over. So I see that would be 6. So I count by 2s 1, 2, 3 times to get 6. All right. So now I have 13 up top. I need to do 2 times 3, which is 6, subtract, and I have 1 left over. I have no numbers left to bring down, so that one is my remainder. Now we can check our work. So if you remember our steps from the last problem, the first thing we're doing is multiplying our answer, which was 13, without the remainder. We're multiplying it by 2 because that's the number we divided by. So 13 times 2. 3 times 2. Well, if I count by 3 two times, I get 3. 6. 2 times 1 is 2. And don't forget, we have to add our remainder. Our remainder was 1. So 26 plus 1 equals 27. And I get what I started with. So I know that my answer was correct. So for this, the quotient was 13 and the remainder was 1. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to provide free educational videos. Comment with any questions or suggestions for tutorials that you would like to see next. Thank you.